I slept in 20 minute increments that night, getting up every so often to look for ships and check for weather. I could tell that the wind was increasing, but I really didn't want to do any sail changes in the dark that first day out. So I waited until sunrise and then suited up. It was blowing a lovely 25. I put a double reef in the main before I did anything else. This was the first time that I had had to reef a head sail in that much wind. Before, when I was sailing south in November, I would go out in 25 knots, which meant that I was pre-reefing the main. So it was an interesting experience. There's no way with just a wind vane that your boat is going to be held head to wind, which means that a lot of what you're doing is done pinching, which isn't quite as nice and easy as when you're head to wind as far as raising all the sails. One routine, probably the only routine that I've stuck with for this whole trip is brushing my teeth once every morning and once every night and drinking a little thermos of tea right after sunrise. Everything else has kind of gone to shit, but that is my one semblance of the passage of time. And starting day one, I did not interrupt that, even though sometimes I have to start working before I get to brush my teeth. Little did I know, I was about to have one of the worst nights of my life. Except for that one time in high school when my boyfriend and I had a fight and my world was like totally over. That was definitely worse. Thank you. C definitely is not five star, but I have had some awesome cracker meals out there in the cockpit and this was definitely one of them. It's ridiculous how excited I was that day. Looking back on it, the whole Gulfstream experience was pretty hellacious, but I guess I was just blissfully unaware at that point of what was about to come for the next week, really. But it was probably good. Um, I went about my routine. I watched the wind slowly pick up from 20 to 25 and then gusts to 30 and then blowing a steady 25, gusting upwards into the low 30s. The waves were also picking up. They went from pretty little seas. They started building to about eight to 10 footers by probably noon. Wind kept picking up throughout the afternoon until it became ferocious. It was sometime at about this point that I started to realize that I wasn't actually getting anywhere. It seemed like I was sailing really fast, but in fact, I was just sailing in place, barely. The sun just set. It's blowing a steady 40 outside right now, and I have just hoped to. All I have up is my tiny storm jib. I struck the main. The waves are probably about 15 feet right now. I can't get out of the Gulf Stream. Uh, the wind is blowing from the due east. If I try to go on a southeast tack, I get pushed backwards west. If I try to go on a northeast tack, I just get pushed due north at almost eight knots. I'm getting pushed slowly northwest at about one and a half knots. Um, I'm already halfway to Cape Hatteras but I don't think that I'm gonna end up on the shore there because the Gulf Stream is too strong. It's just gonna push me north. I'm really worried that I'm gonna get pushed too close to shore. I mean, I'm getting pushed up onto Hatteras, which has this horrible reputation. Every ounce of every part of me is screaming, get out of the Gulf Stream, get out of the Gulf Stream, but I can't. It's the worst feeling ever. I'm trapped in the Gulf Stream. The next morning, the seas had laid down a bit and the winds were down to 25 to 30. They'd also switched to be coming from the southeast again instead of the east, so I decided it was time to make a break for it. I turned my boat and started to slowly, slowly peel away from the Gulf Stream. Even when I was pointing due east, my boat was still going north-northeast, but the further I got away from the Gulf Stream, the more my boat turned east. And sure enough, after a couple hours of sailing, I was actually sailing due east. And as if on cue, 
As soon as I left the Gulf Stream, the waves quieted down, the wind quieted down. I got four awesome hours of beautiful weather until another system came through and it poured rain and blew 30 knots for the next 24 hours. But I didn't even care because every minute of it was getting me that much further away from the stupid, horrible Gulf Stream and I was just so happy to be putting miles and miles between me and it. Good morning, day four. I've been completely becalmed since sunset last night. I had to take the jib down because it was just flogging all over the place. The main was being super loud and I felt bad for it, so I put a reef in it and then tied off these two little triangle point things so that it wouldn't slap around so much, which I think has been helpful. Um, the wind seems like it's kind of filling in a little bit, maybe. I'm not going to motor because I don't really have that much diesel my engine's not very big. For now, I'm just going to enjoy this different type of sailing. I'm drifting a little further south than I wanted to be, but so it goes. I'm pretty happy this morning. I think my first pet is this dumb hornet thing. I'm really torn between not wanting it on board because it will sting me possibly and not wanting to kill it. Since it was such beautiful weather, I decided it was time to take the first of many saltwater baths. So I threw a bucket into the warm ocean water and sat in the cockpit and lathered myself up. I love the feeling of being salty. I like the way it makes my hair feel and the way it makes my skin feel. It helps me build calluses on my hands and feet for walking around barefoot and handling sails. It's just an awesome, refreshing way to pep up your day. So it's blowing about 20 to 25 out there from the east. I'm sailing southeast, so the wind's just a tiny bit off my nose. Gecko's going seven and a half knots. I'm just flying. This is such a fast boat. Today is officially one week since I left. Beaufort. I'm about halfway there, which is cool, so I'm celebrating by eating a watermelon. I love how much perspective changes on a boat, because I go from, oh, this watermelon is half covered in mold, and just gonna throw it out, to, oh, this watermelon's only half covered in mold. I'm motor sailing right now. I haven't turned the engine on since that one fateful Gulf Stream night, but I decided since it's halfway day, I can, and there's no wind. I'm really stoked to get to the place where I turn and start heading south. I'm already kind of starting to make the turn as the wind is heading me, but I still have another 40 miles before I'd really like to commit to southing. I guess what's surprising me the most about this trip is that I thought I was going to get bored, but I haven't gotten bored. I also haven't done anything. I haven't played music. Mostly I've just been reading my book. Looking at the waves. I don't want to do anything else. I was really pleased being exactly where I am. I'm also incredibly tired, which I think is part of it. I like it. I really like it. It's so different from any other experience I've had at sea. But it's fine. <laughs> I find myself spending a lot of time making decisions like should I nap right now or should I read my book right now? And I'll just kind of stand there and think about it for 10 minutes. I'm really tired. I feel like I can just sleep forever. My book keeps winning the battle of sleep or book. It's always book. <laughs> Something I'm noticing about myself out here is how lethargic I've become about um, pursuing knowledge. You don't really have to be prepared for much if you have a smartphone. Like I'll have these moments where it's nighttime and there's no wind and my sails are just slapping all over the place and I'm like, shit, what do I do? And instead of immediately thinking, what do I think I should do? My first thought is, why can't I look up that information? Oh, right. I'm at sea. Shit, now I have to use my brain to think about it. It also kind of takes the creativity and self-thought out of things, for sure. This is the first time I've been without internet for a week since 2015. I was at sea for two weeks with no internet. I think that if I had internet on this trip, I would feel very lonely all the time. 
but I don't because I don't have that almost contact with civilization. What it is making me realize is just how dependent I am on it for my own original thought. Like, you can't Google, what do I do? My sails are flogging because there's no wind. You're gonna find a bunch of cruiser forums and it's gonna take way longer than just being like, oh, maybe I should take down the jib and reef the main so there's less of it flogging around, but leave some of it up so the boat isn't just going all over the place and then lash the boom so that it doesn't slap back and forth. That wasn't that hard to think about, was it? After my happy little halfway day of rest and solving all the world's problems with my glorious thoughts, I noticed that there was another storm building on the horizon. This storm lasted for about 24 hours. It blew. 30 knots on my nose with seas on the beam that were breaking over my boat and rolling with green water over the hatches into the cockpit. So I ended up having to pinch to put the waves just far enough forward of the beam so that they weren't breaking over my boat. It was crazy and freezing cold and really big, steep, close together seas, but I made it through. I don't have any footage of that because it was just too crazy of an experience to get the GoPro out, even I could barely hold on myself. But once that storm blew itself out, I was in the glorious, amazing Easterlies, and my life got so much better! It was amazing! Dear Diary, Today I finally got the fuck out of the stormy-ass weather up north and into those sweet, sweet Easterlies I've been waiting for. The sunset that night was unbelievable. Not only was it gorgeous, and puffy, cloudy beautifulness, but I wasn't dreading what was going to happen after it got dark because I was in the Easterlies and nothing was going to go wrong. And you know what? Pretty much nothing did go wrong for the rest of the trip, which was five days of beautiful awesomeness that I really, really needed because the first nine kind of sucked. For the next several days, I conducted activities befitting my delicate feminine nature, such as suntanning nude in the cockpit, nudity not shown here, delicate feminine, remember that part, and sewing my quarantine in Puerto Rican flags in preparation for my imminent arrival at a new port. I've been sewing flags, so here we have the quarantine flag. This one was really hard to do, super complex flaggery right here. My American flag, which I did not sew because fuck that. And now for the Puerto Rican flag trick, is to squint your eyes, okay, are you following with me? And look at it from really far away, and then it looks great. <laughs> this is my last night before I get in. I can't believe it. Um, I have cleaned and put things away, washed myself, I took a shower, it was great. Um, changed out the old salt for new salt. Land ho! hours later I finally arrived in Culebra and dropped hook under sail and was able to get some of that sleep I'd been waiting for. I did it! And all was well.